Hello champions and welcome to today's session. A very very good afternoon to all of you. Hi Soumya, Gungun, Raj, see I remember your name, Shabnam. How are you all doing? How was your weekend? What did you do? Did you have fun? All right, great. I am perfectly visible and audible to all of you. Fantastic. Hi, Radhika. Lots of smiley faces there. Nice. All right. Great. So all of you had a fantastic weekend. That's good to know. I think we're all ready to get started with today's session. And as you can see today, we'll be going over the chapter. This is Jodi's Fawn. This is chapter six from your textbook, Honeydew. And this is a story by Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings. Actually, this is a little part of a novel by Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings. And we are going to go over that little part that is in your textbook and it's a very heartwarming story about um, Jody and how he adopts a fawn. So without further ado, let's get right into part one of this chapter, which is the summary and analysis. All right. No worries, Priya. Welcome. Hi. We haven't even started yet, so you're right on time. Okay, great. So before we get started with what actually happens in the story in the textbook, we need to know a little bit about what happens in the story in the novel. And your textbook um, quickly tells you in a couple of lines that um, our story begins right after Jody's father um, had been bitten by a rattlesnake and in order to save his life, he had to kill a doe. A doe is a female deer. I'm sure a lot of you know the song doe, a deer, a female deer. So remember that doe is a female deer. So he had to kill a doe in order to use the doe's liver to suck out the poison of the rattlesnake. Now the story is very old and back in those days people used to think that a deer's liver can actually suck out um, the poison from a snake. Um, now we know scientifically that that's not really accurate but at that time that's what people did. And so after Jody's father did that, obviously the doe unfortunately died. And uh, what was left behind was the doe's little baby, which is the fawn. So a fawn is a baby deer. Doe is a female deer, fawn is a baby deer. All right. So now we know that Jody's father had to kill a doe in order to save his own life. Jody was watching all of this happen. And then Jody felt really bad for the little orphaned fawn or the fawn who lost his mother. All right. So let's get right to it. Okay. So our story in the textbook begins with Jody thinking constantly about the poor little fawn the fawn kept coming in his thoughts and his dreams and he felt really really bad for the fawn okay so he felt dejected okay extremely sad for killing the fawn's mother right and so jody decides to get up go to his father who is laying in bed recovering um, and he wanted to ask his father whether he could go back to the forest and get that fawn. So Jody tried to convince his father that they should adopt the fawn because it's the right thing to do. Because the fawn is without his mother because of them. It was because of Jody and his father that the fawn lost his mother. Right? So it's only the right thing to go and help the fawn. So Jody's father had no argument for this. He agreed with Jody. He said, what you're saying uh, makes sense and I don't know how to say no to you. So I am convinced you can go tell your mother that I have given you permission to go get the fawn. All right. So then Jody, after convincing his father, telling him how it's their responsibility to take care of the fawn, goes to his mother and sort of says the same thing. And over there, the doctor that was sitting there with his mother agrees with Jody and says that, yes, nothing in this world ever comes for free. Okay, which means that you, because the doe lost 
her life to save Jodi's father. It is now your responsibility to pay it back and help the little fawn that lost his mother. Right? Okay. So, Jodi, Jodi's mother is initially not convinced. She says, uh, you know, no, I'm not so sure about this and we know are you sure that you can sacrifice your own milk to feed that little animal because that's all we have to feed it and Jodi says yes yes I'll give the fawn the milk that is meant for me no problem and Jodi is convinced to go and get the fawn back so he asks Millwheel this character Millwheel for help and Millwheel says yes I'll take Jodi into the forest and we can quickly go and find the fawn so Jodi sits on Millwheel's horse and they both go into the dense forest to find the little fawn. Yes, Jody is a good boy. Rightfully. Very good, Rashmi. Okay. So, Jody promises his mother that he will feed the fawn his portion of milk. So, Jody is sacrificing his own milk for the fawn. And Jodi also promised his mother that he would return home soon. So Jodi made two promises to his mother and Milwheel and Jodi set off to find the horse. Now here you can see a little dialogue. Do you think the fawn's still there? Will you help me find him? This is Jodi asking Milwheel. And Milwheel says, we'll find him if he's alive. How you know it's a he? Okay, and then Jodi says... The spots were all in a line. On a doe fawn, Pa says the spots are every which way. What does that mean? It means that Jodi knew that the little fawn that was left behind was a male and not a female. Because in a doe fawn or a female fawn, the spots are all anywhere, right? They're not in a particular pattern or an order. But on a male fawn, the spots are all in a line. Okay, now this is how Jodi knows that the fawn was a male. Alright, so we're done with part one of the story. If you have any doubts along the way, please leave your doubts in the comments and we'll get to them right away. So, so far, so good. Good afternoon, Mayank. And now we have reached part two of the summary. Great, Gungun. Okay, so Milveel and Jodi then arrived at the forest. Okay, and they reached the spot where Jodi's father had been bitten by the snake. Now, at this point, Jodi did not want Millwheel to come with him and look for the fawn. Okay, and there were two reasons for this. What were the two reasons that Jodi did not want Millwheel to accompany him? One reason was that if Jodi was not able to find the fawn, Jodi would have become very very sad and he did not want Millwheel to know that he was sad. So he did not want Millwheel to see how sad he would have felt had he not found the fawn. That's number one. Reason number two is if Jodi did find the fawn, Jodi would have been extremely happy and this would have been a very special moment for Jodi and the fawn. And so this was such a special secret moment that he did not want to share it with Milveel. He wanted it all for himself. So the two reasons why Jodi wanted Milveel to go away was because if he got too sad, after not finding the fawn, he did not want Millwheel to be there. Or if he got very, very happy after finding the fawn, he did not want Millwheel to be there. Okay? So, uh, so he, uh, Jody at this point makes up a reason and uh, says, Okay, you know what? I'll continue. I don't think the horse can go through this path. So why don't you leave me here? And after a little bit of hesitation, Millwheel says, okay, but just try to be safe. Don't get bitten by a snake yourself. And Jody says, yes, yes, I'm all good. And Jody continues the journey by himself, right? And so once he began searching for the fawn, the first thing he actually ended up finding was the dead body of the doe. Okay, and because the incident of killing the doe had happened one day ago, at this point, the doe was being, I mean, the there were a bunch of birds 
um, that are called buzzards and buzzards are these birds that are like vultures so there are some birds that actually eat uh, animals right they are called birds of prey so they eat small animals or sometimes even uh, the carcass or dead bodies of larger animals so buzzards are such birds and they were all around the doe's body and they were feeding on it and so at this point uh, Jody took out his bow which is a, a trunk of a uh, or a large branch of a tree and he used the bow to scare the buzzards away and he went through there uh, in search of the fawn okay but he was not able to find the fawn anywhere over there right so then here we we end part two of the story with jody being unable to find the fawn he just sees the carcass of the doe he sees buzzards he sees the paw prints of huge cats that were probably there uh, but he does he's not able to find the fawn then we move on to part three of the story so we've already covered two parts i hope it's all good to go so far and all right so coming to part three now jody sensed some movement in front of him and got startled and then he realized that the little fawn is right in front of him the fawn looked at jody jody looked at the fawn and jody uh, was being extremely careful so as to not startle or uh, scare the fawn away so he gently stroked the sides and how it's described in the book is he touched the fawn or stroke the fawn as if the fawn was a china deer now what does that mean you know there are sometimes you you'll find plates and cups maybe a lot of you have these in your houses as well that your parents say are china what that means is they are made of a particular kind of clay and they are very delicate so they can break easily okay so jody treated the deer as if it was also a china deer that means it was a very delicate deer okay and so uh, just like that he slowly stroked uh, the fawn's neck and this made jody delirious so he jody got very very happy at this point and the why was he happy it's because when he was touching the fawn the fawn was not running away the fawn probably recognized jody and was happy to see jody and yes rashmi says it right there chini mitti great great connection that you made there so yeah because your cups and saucers and plates that are made um with that are china that are made with chini mitti can break very easily that's why the author is making this comparison that jody was you handle things that can break easily with a lot of care so jody was handling the fawn with a lot of care and once the fawn did not get scared jody got very very happy and used his opportunity to pick up the little fawn and started taking him home okay so um jody was afraid that the fawn might kick or bleat what is bleat bleating is the sound that these animals make a deer a goat a sheep right so jody was scared that the fawn might kick or bleat at the sight or smell of his mother so like i told you uh, when jody went out looking for the fawn uh, the dead body of the fawn's mother the doe was right there so jody was scared that the fawn might not like it and will obviously kick bleat and get angry and stressed uh, if he saw the saw his mother so um, jody quickly took the fawn away from that area and finally shield, shielded the little fawn carried him very carefully and finally made his way to the to the road that went to his house right so uh, in the journey jody a lot of times got breathless he got tired he had to put the fawn down but he was taking these small breaks but he was very happy about finding the fawn and taking the fawn home all right okay sorry radhika i will remember that your name is radhika and not rashmi and yes gungun rightly put it jodi loved the fawn okay 
and then finally jodi protected the fawn protected the fawn's face from the thorns and bushes all around took it home and went right to his pa and showed his father who was very very happy to see that jodi finally found the fawn and you can see that in the pictures over here pa look and i'm glad you found him and then finally as promised jodi went to the kitchen took his share of the milk and started feeding it to the fawn okay and what jodi did was he dipped his fingers into the milk and let the fawn suck on it and every time he took his fingers away the fawn would start bleating because it wanted more and jodi kept feeding the fawn and he thrust his fingers into the fawn's uh, soft wet mouth and the fawn sucked greedily okay and then we can see towards the end that jodi and the fawn developed a relationship of love and trust and jodi really really took care of the fawn right and that's where our story ends jodi and fawn become best friends yes yes dilip kumar they just be very well put and that's the end of our sweet little story very simple nothing too complicated i hope everything is clear in the next part of this session we will be answering some questions so uh if you've read the story this summary will help you understand it better if you haven't read the story after watching this summary you will be able to read it very very easily so do give it a read and then we'll answer some questions about it in part 2 of this session right yes it is indeed a fascinating story very sweet story and that's all so the little fawn is telling us that that's all folks so yes at the end see so simple went by so quickly hello hi akash right so the what all can we learn from this sweet little story we can uh learn value such as compassion care justice how are you learning justice you know the jodi and his father took the fawn's mother's life and so it was their responsibility to take care of the little fawn who was now motherless because of them it teaches us compassion and care the fact that jodi in his heart felt all these emotions for this fawn uh highlights the values of compassion and concern towards other human beings and animals or concern towards other living creatures right so it's not just about feeling sad it's about doing something so if jo jodi could have felt very very sad about the fawn being motherless and he would have spent his life just feeling bad about it but instead jodi decided to take action and he did that and offered a helping hand to this little fawn and gave the fawn a good life right okay so you will get all updates radhika don't worry and i'll tell you how you'll get all the updates so obviously join the telegram channel the links are in the description you have a host of benefits like revision questions session notes fun facts homework questions quizzes and most importantly session updates so that you never ever miss a session we've got you covered as always so if you like the session do press like subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon and here's by choose classes with two teacher advantage so if you think uh, one teacher is able to help you a lot imagine how much two teachers are going to help you so do give by choose classes a try all free trial classes and links are in the description box All right thank you so much see you next time Smita I have a lot of favorite novels I don't think I can just name one but um when I was your age I loved reading David Copperfield All right thank you so much bye bye see you next time